Romans 14 verse 7 and 8 tell us, For none of us liveth unto himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Paul begins here by saying, none of us. And that begs the question, who is us? Well, this is a letter, a letter to the Romans. So all we need to do is to look at whom it is addressed. And it is stated in Romans 1 verse 7. It says there, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The saints in Rome, the Christians in Rome. The greeting is uh, from uh, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Christians in Rome, but Paul says none of us. He includes himself, and um, by saying that uh, he's showing this is not just aimed at them but it applies to all Christians, and therefore also to them. So, if it is for Christians in general, it's also for you and me. So, time to pay attention. What is he saying? If we look at chapter 14, Romans chapter 14, we see that it begins with him that is weak. And if you then go to the next chapter, 15, you see that it begins by saying, we that are strong. So, the context here is believers in different stages uh, of maturity and with different views on actually rather insignificant details. And the, the, the context here is to, uh, to show that we should not um, judge or even condemn one another um, over such minor issues, but be like-minded. That is what he says in chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. And agree that we do not live to ourselves. Now, I'm, I'm saying here minor um, issues. There are, of course, um, major doctrinal uh, issues that, that cannot be overlooked, that we cannot compromise on and we never should. Uh, but that is not what he speaks about here. When we uh, decided to be called Christians, Christ eons, eh, Christians, we literally gave up our name to Christ. We belong to Him, not to ourselves. It's very much like a consecrated bride belonging to her future groom. Now, the purpose of our lives is not to please ourselves, but to please God. And that obviously runs counter to the spirit and the philosophy of this, of this world, of this age. Um, society is increasingly hostile towards Christians, towards Christianity. It's really an anti-Christian society, an anti-Christian world. It's all about self, about individualism. Me, myself and I. My personal truth, my personal space, my self-identity, you hear it all the time. And let no one get in the way of that, because then he or she will be labeled a bigot, intolerant, non-inclusive, supremacist, fundamentalist, extremist, homophobe, anti-LGBTQ, etc., uh, an offensive, and, and the list goes on and on. There are a plethora of labels that um, are available for those that do not go along with the current agenda and trend. And such, um, in such a mindset, there is, of course, absolutely no space for God. It is really the opposite of living unto the Lord, what Paul speaks about here. Now, perhaps the main the two main um, factors that has, have kept society glued together um, in the past until now uh, 
where family and uh, and work or teamwork they force the people to be in agreement to venture together for success uh, it requires cooperation uh, well family has been under attack from the very beginning and uh, certainly the last half century or so um, family life has been systematically dismantled and uh, divorces have almost become a standard follow-up of uh, the, the marriage of the wedding and um, if there is a wedding to begin with in a traditional uh, and a natural man-woman situation uh, has become just one of many options the main objective in friendships and relationships marriages is what's in it for me and as for the workplace it's largely the same there is less and less interest in the common target and the situation of colleagues it's all about individual profit if there are better opportunities elsewhere then uh, it's time to leave and to change jobs uh, just like in relationships there's no loyalty job hopping is totally accepted and the work from home concept that many were forced to in recent years has only accelerated the individuality uh, in the work situation so society is not social at all people live for themselves individuality is prevalent and in such an environment people don't need God in fact they become their own gods it's the original lie of Satan you shall be as gods now unfortunately this applies to the church as well and that is why Paul reminds us uh, here that none of us lives to himself but instead all of us live to God and God calls us out of this individualistic materialistic and self-centered culture a culture that is worse than the world has ever seen except perhaps for the time just before the flood when the wickedness of man was great in the earth and everything in man's thoughts and hearts was only evil continually as we can read in Genesis 6 we have come to a place where everyone is doing what is right in his own eyes even in the church but it is possible to come out of her although it's not easy it takes faith courage perseverance we will, will be like salmon swimming against the stream against the course of this world but it is possible through Christ and um, Paul confirms that uh, in his epistle to the Ephesians Ephesians chapter 2 verses 2 through 5 he writes wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, the, uh, and the, of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved the children of disobedience they live to themselves not to God they want to become rich they want to become honored they indulge in the ease uh, the comfort and the pleasures of life they gratify the flesh they go after fashion and amusement how different is that from denying oneself and taking up one's cross daily second corinthians 5 verse 15 paul writes and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again and Jesus says it himself in Matthew 6 verse 24 then said Jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself 
and take up his cross and follow me. So, how are we doing in all of this? Let's ask ourselves a few questions. I have three questions. Um, the first one, um, based on 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, where it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So the question is, do we do all to the glory of God? And we should not think of big matters in life only. It speaks here of eating and drinking and whatsoever you do. That means everything. If we set our minds to honor God in the little things, then we will already be in the habit when the big things come. Uh, this is also what Jesus says in Luke 16 verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. So it's important to, to do everything to the glory of God. Everything. So that's the first question. Do we do all to the glory of God? All. The second question, based on Ephesians 5, verse 20, there it says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do we give thanks always for all things? That's the question. How many things in our lives do we just take for granted? How often do we thank God for our health? Or is it only when we are sick that we plead to him for healing? How much gratitude do we have for God's providence? Do we acknowledge his providence in our lives? It means that we understand that uh, without God we would have nothing. Except perhaps the temporal distractions of this world. Do we give thanks always for all things? The third question, based on Galatians uh, 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So the question is, do we live by faith in the Son of God? That means that we trust and follow Jesus and his word, no matter where it takes us. It means that we acknowledge that he owns us because he loved us and he died for us. It's very personal. Notice that Paul writes here, uh, the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's very personal. He did it for you, and he did it for me. This means that, and I've, I've said this before, if, if you were the only person in the entire universe, he would still have done the same thing for you. That is how much he loves you. And, and yeah, if you try to wrap your head around that, it's, uh, it's mind-boggling. It means also that um, if we... Uh, if we do live by faith in the Son of God, that uh, we reject the things of the world, regardless of the consequences. And the consequences are there, and they are increasingly there because of how everything is interconnected and um, the whole globalization uh, and centralization of everything. But we can do so because we trust Him and because He has overcome this world. Back to Romans 14. It also says that no man dieth to himself. This expresses the totality with which a follower of Christ belongs to him. Everything we do and everything we suffer is done in his will. How we behave, what we own, what we leave behind. Yes, even in our death we are his. In the grave and in the future life that follows, we are equally His. And these are big words. And we really have to examine ourselves to see if we can actually live up to that. 
Philippians 1 verse 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Do we think this way? Does Jesus, his teachings, his will for us, fill our lives? And even so much that they are our lives. That he is our life. That is what it means. It's not a side activity. It's not a hobby for Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings or something. It has to be our lives. Paul was very serious when he wrote this. He practiced it. It was not theory. Every moment he lived with Christ, he obeyed him. He glorified him. He pleased him. And this is how we ought to live. This is how the bride prepares herself. This is what Jesus meant when he said, follow me. To follow him in every step, follow him in life, to follow him in death, and to follow him in resurrection. Amen.